Hello and welcome back to Man Cave Hobbies. So today's video is just like its title, How Did I Make a Shark Bite Whoop? Or How Can You Make a Shark Bite Whoop? Um, a lot of guys were asking me that. I had a couple of videos on the Shark Bite Whoops out there and guys were asking me about parts, what did I use, and so on and so forth. Guys, it's super simple with these R3D shifter frames. Uh, the links down below is just to kind of give you an idea of the parts that I used and they're not affiliated so you can just go wherever you want to go i'll just list the parts down below you go find them um there's no, should be no commercials on this channel as well this is just an extension of my hobby so if you're seeing commercials it's youtube get yourself adblock plus get yourself uBlock origin no more commercials it's that simple so let's just uh let's just get down and dirty with this thing um I got a couple of these frames last year because of Nick Burns' channel. So I had the Mobula 6. The Mobula 6 was a great little frame, but it kept I kept breaking cameras. Anybody who's ever watched this channel knows that I like to do close proximity. I like to shoot gaps in my shop. And I think I was on my second camera or third camera. I was on my third camera at the time. And I seen these uh I seen Nick Burns' channel, he had these frames on there, and I thought, wow, what a, what a solution that would be. I mean, because it's lower profile. It puts all of, the, all of the mass right here in the center, and I like that. Um, but it also still allows some protection for the camera, because it's not just sticking up out here where it can get whacked right into. And I've flown this over, this is the 75 millimeter version, and I've flown this um, the last year, probably put, I don't know how many packs I put through this. Normally when I fly at the shop, it's 20 or 30 packs, a couple times a week, last year. I have not broken anything on this, including the camera, which is really nice, especially with the, the Shark Bite camera, because it's 50 bucks. Um, when I got the Shark Bite, I've, I don't know how many packs I put through it, but I've bashed, crashed, smashed, got the thing wet. I actually reversed the polarity on the VTX itself. Blew out a little thing on the top there. Carl at Divi Math told me how to get around that with just making a solder bridge. Um, so I think I think the Shark Bite Whoop board is a pretty damn durable board. I really truly do. Now I did do conformal coating on mine, uh, which definitely helped when it got wet because it landed in a sink. Um, so I would definitely suggest that if you if you get this, put some conformal coating on there just in case. You never know. Uh, we do have a couple firmwares coming up. We got uh, one firmware for the SharkBite system that even unlocks more features for the Betaflight OSD. And we have another firmware coming up that allows ByteFrost users to use their ByteFrost VTX with their SharkBite RX. So that should be out actually this next week. They're writing the instructions right now. So I'm going to do the overview on this thing here using this camera. I've never done that before, so hopefully it turns out okay. Um, and I'll break down the parts. I'll show you what I'm using, and I'm gonna show you this new frame here. This is the Mu-175. It's a lot lighter than the 4K version, and it's perfectly made to build a shock bite whoop. A lot of guys were asking, what was your build on this? So this is the 75 millimeter whoop. I bought two frames last December. I bought one 65 millimeter for the Mobula 6, and I bought a 75 millimeter here. This is actually made for a Turtle V2. So it's really not made for what I'm using it for. Um, the, I did not have the parts to review this frame. I did not have any extra motors or parts or anything like that. But I did have a Larva X. I had a Larva X that Banggood sent to me for review. I reviewed it once, I threw it on the wall. And so I thought, well, what the hell? You know, I'm just reviewing the frame, not really the flight performance. So I grabbed the Larva X, took all the parts off of it, shoved it on this frame. I wasn't expecting much because it came in at 45 grams. These are the 1103 Happy Model 1103 7000 KV motors. Um, it had a, the Larva X had a Crazy B version one board in it. It also had an XM Plus receiver, and also too the VTX was 200 milliwatts with a built-in DVR. So this was quite porky at 45 grams. And I, I really wasn't expecting much out of it, but it turned out to be my favorite flyer. And the reason why is because I think it's on the cusp of being underpowered, but not underpowered, if you know what I'm saying. So I have a lot of throttle resolution in the mid stick. It doesn't do that tweaky thing, you know, where you just go a little bit below on your throttle stick and it drops like a stone or it pops up. It's really, really smooth. And that's what I loved about this thing, especially my style of flying. However, with the 7,000 KV motors, and getting these new mobility gates and flying around the house, it doesn't really grip in the corners. So I am gonna be changing out the motors for this frame here and hopefully get a lot more grip. So that's what we have here. That's all I used. It was really, really a simple build. And then when I changed it over to the, the Shark Bite, I just took out the VTX, the Larva X VTX, um, took out the XM receiver, 
and went with a, a, a newer version, a late model version of the Crazy Bee board. But I had to drill in here to make the 14 millimeter camera work and so on and so forth. And I had to use a regular GEP battery strap here. This one here is a lot lighter frame. This is actually made, this is the Moo 175, it's actually made to stack two Whoop style boards together. So this is going to be a way simple build. You don't have to drill the hoops. You don't have to use grommets to raise up this top piece or anything like that. Um, it also, I like the fact it has gusseting back here. So it's a little bit stronger back here as opposed to this. Um, and I like the battery straps. So the battery straps made out of a TPU. So it's going to be a lot lighter than the cloth, the cloth battery strap I'm using here. And I'm going to use these motors here. These are the Skystar 11,000 KV 1103 motors. And I'm hoping that I, go, I don't go from five minute flight times to three and a half minute flight times. I hope I don't lose that kind of efficiency, but I am hoping for a lot more grip in the corners. So that's what the motor I'm gonna use on this build. Um, and I'm also gonna use a different antenna. I, I, these actually work really well, believe it or not. And they're very, very light. The cord's not as thick, you know, the, the coax is not as thick as this antenna, but these actually do work really well and they're a lot lighter than this antenna here. I'm also gonna be using this cable here. So when you get the shark bite whoop, you get an 85 millimeter cam uh, cable. So I found out that these cables here, these MIPI cables for the Caddx v uh, Turtle V2 actually do work. And this is a 5.5, so I should be able to shave a little bit of weight. I was kind of hoping to get one that was only three millimeters, but 5.5 was the smallest I could get. How you get the FC in here, there's four rubber grommets one on each corner and you got to kind of tweak and bend the frame in order to get the FC in here okay you do want to use the latest crazy bee board and the reason why is version one the UARTs were kind of screwed up and I, ha I had to use the LED pads to soft serial in order to get the Betaflight OSD up and running on this board on this VTX and it was an absolute pain so the latest ones don't seem to have that problem. This is your RX right here. It's a very, very small connection. So hopefully you have a good soldering iron for that. Um, and then this is your TX. And this is your positive and negative, of course. And try not to do what I do. Don't, don't reverse the polarity because it's kind of a pain in the neck to try to scrape off the IC that burns up on here and build a solder bridge. So that's how it's done. It's really, really simple. Now this board here, I, I have it mounted upside down. And I know a lot of you are going, what about heat? What about the idea? The reason I mounted it upside down is because this particular frame, the top of it, interferes with this plug right here. So I just mounted it upside down, and the MIPI cable goes inside between these two boards. And I know, once again, you're thinking about heat. You're thinking, no, that's kind of that's hacky. Guys, Carl at DiviMath is a brilliant engineer. He made this whoop board so damn durable, you can rip the antenna off. It's not going to burn it up. Um, you can obviously reverse the polarity. It does burn up one little chip, but you can scrape it off and fix it. Um, I've gotten this wet. You can kind of see the water, the actual water residue and stuff, even though it's, it does have some conformal coating on this side. It, it survived it. I've bashed, crashed, smashed it. It survived it. I took a little chunk out of the one corner up here. It, it survived that. It's a very, very durable board. It's made for racing. It's made for whoops. It's made to bash and crash. So don't worry about it. Um, I've not had a problem. Not only that, when this thing is disarmed, if you have the OSD up and running, when you disarm your, your, your whoop, this goes down into uh, 25 milliwatt mode. So if you do get stuck in a tree or somewhere you can't get your quad, don't worry about this thing burning up if you have it set at 200. All right, so here we are with the camera. Once again, super bonehead simple. I mean, they actually have it where it's recessed inside here. So I could use the stock screws that came with the little run cam racer. Um, I didn't have to use a longer screw. I didn't have to drill it out. It's super, super simple. The MIPI cable just goes right above here like this, as you can see. And on the shark bite, on the run cam here, the you can flip the image. If you get it upside down, that's fine. You can just flip the image in the menu screen on the uh, VRX, but this is how it goes. So it just, the cable comes up like this. This is your top, this is your bottom obviously, but super, super, super simple. This is the finished Whoop, and it looks like a retail product. I mean, truly it does. Beautiful. Very minimalistic, very refined. 
it really truly does look like a retail product. You can see I, I put the RX antenna up here so it can't get clipped right between the camera and this top plate. And the VTX antenna is held really nicely right in this back area here. I did put a little bit of a dab of uh, hot glue on there. Um, I'm really happy with the build. You know, before when I first started with this, this type of frame, the 75 millimeter Cinewoop frame from uh, R3D shifters, it, it came out to 45 grams using all the Larva X components. And then when I switched over to the Shark Bite uh, board and camera, it came out to 48 and a half grams. So now with this new setup, it should be 44.7. So I shaved a couple of grams off there, and that's, you know, three and a half grams. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Now, as far as flight performance, I'm going to start throwing up a little bit of flight videos here. On the 7,000 KV motors, the 1103 7,000 KVs by Happy Model, I was running the 1636 for uh, GemFam props, and I was getting about four and a half to five minutes of flight time with the VTX set at 25 milliwatts. With it set at 200 milliwatts, it was about four minutes, 15 seconds to four and a half minutes. With these 1103s, 11,000 kV motors, yeah. Even though it feels way locked in, I mean, it truly does. It flies amazing, and I, and I don't have that kick out. I have a lot of cornering. Um, it just feels really, really locked in. When I have the 1636 uh, 4 props by GemFan on them, on here. Um, but the flight times do go down. They go down to three minutes. Three minutes, I think the best I had got was three minutes and 15 seconds. Now that's based off of a, you know, 2S 350 pack. So, yeah. I tried these three blade, these, these are the um, 1635 threes by GemFan. It did raise up the amount of flight time to three minute, three and a half minutes with 200, you know, this set at 200 milliwatts. Um, however, the corner, I mean, it, it was good. It wasn't bad. It was better than the 7,000 KV motors with the floor, four bladed props, but still I was expecting a little bit more flight time. I, I truly was. Now I did try these TBS, um, pro, in propellers right here. These things are horrible. Um, I can't get, I mean, the flight performance was like, it was actually worse than the 7,000 KV. And not only that, the flight times were like two minutes and 58 seconds. So these are out. I will, I will never use those again. And I've tried those on various different builds. I can never get any real performance out of those props. So I'm going to say if you have a small apartment or a small home, then the 11,000 KV motors are a good choice if you're using this 13 or this, this 1636 gem fan props. It's nice. It's, it's, tight it flies like it's really really locked in if you have a bigger space and you want a little bit more flight time then i would definitely go with a 7000 kv motor or an 8000 because actually what i want to try next is an 8500 kv motor i think if i got an 85 1103 8500 kv motor using the uh, 1636 four bladed props I think that's, I think that would be the magic. I think I would end up with four minute flight times or, you know, three minute and 45 seconds to four minutes with this set at 200. And it would give me that overall performance that I'm looking for, where it still has more grip than the 7000s. It has a more locked in feel. However, you still have the flight times. So that's it, guys. That's my flight video for today. Um, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and, and hit that bell notification. I do have the Fox Ear camera coming for the Shark Bite system, but uh, it's somewhere lost in China. So that's my video for today, guys. Have a good evening, and thank you for watching.